What is happening everybody? Derek here from DW Designs and welcome back to the channel. If you guys watched the last video, we're going to be continuing on the fundamentals of sheet metal. On today's episode, we're going to be showing you guys how to take your template from a piece of cardboard to a piece of steel. You guys don't want to miss out. It's going to be filled full of information, so stay tuned. Right, guys before we get started I want to say thank you guys for tuning in can't thank you guys enough uh, we just recently hit 200 subscribers so yay for that um, I do want to however say that a lot of you watch the videos I've noticed and are not subscribed do me a favor if you guys gained any value out of these videos hit that subscribe button hit the like button hit the bell notifications it'll really help us out a lot um, we do not get paid to make videos, but I do it because I want the viewers to learn stuff and what it's like to go through the process of making things so that you guys can become the best fabricator um, that you possibly could be, or even garage enthusiasts. It doesn't matter. So guys, thank you so much again for watching, and let's get started. All right, so here are the tools that you guys will need. Not every single tool do you need, but I want to go over them and what we can use them for differently. I'm gonna start with layout spray, okay? Um, which is called Dicom. And you can buy this at your local welder supply store, Amazon or online. And what this is for, so that way you can spray it on your steel, it turns it blue or red, whichever color you decide to go with. And then you follow it up with a scribe and you scribe your template in which basically scratches the paint off of it to a point where you now see your lines everywhere it needs to go. Now this is an option. If you guys do not have this available to you, you don't have to use this, um, but this is the best way to do it in my opinion. The other way you can do it is with a Sharpie. However though, I recommend a fine tip Sharpie, not you know, one of these like normal Sharpies. Otherwise you can get wobbly lines really bad. The other tool that you're going to need is a set of shears, either hand shears or electric shears. Either one will work. I will probably use a combination of the both today. If you have a stump shear or hydraulic shear, that would be the best thing to have because honestly you could knock this out in like literally a couple minutes on a stomp shear, but we do not have that luxury. So we're going to have to cut it out by hand. The other tool that you're going to need if you're cutting it out by hand is most likely a rasp or a file, whatever you decide to call it. And what that's for is so let's just say you get a little wobble in your edge. You can come back in with the rasp and file it off nice and flat, make it nice and straight. Last and not least, you're going to need a deburr knife. Um, this hands down guys is a no brainer. You have to have one. You should not go around without this because this is the best thing in the world, in my opinion, for working with sheet metal. Cause every time you're done cutting something, you run this along there, it takes the burrs off of it. And you don't have to worry about getting cut anymore. Um, still can get cut, but it's a lot harder after you use this tool. So let's go ahead and uh, lay out our sheet metal. And I'm going to use the Dicom technique today because um, I want it to be nice and accurate. So let's get started. Okay, so we got our piece of sheet metal on the sawhorses here. Now you guys are probably wondering what thickness this is. This is 18 gauge um, sheet steel. Yes, it's not the cleanest piece of sheet steel that I've ever worked with, but I've had this piece for quite a while now. So 
We'll go ahead and get into sanding everything, cleaning it up later. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find a straight edge first when starting. However, I'll tell you right now, there is not a single straight edge on this piece of sheet metal. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and take our dicum and spray it all in this area right here because I know that there's not a straight edge anywhere to line this up. So we're not even gonna bother. Um, the closest thing I can see here would be maybe here, but even then I don't really like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and spray the dicum first. Make sure you guys shake this up really good. I'm gonna give it a little test spray here on the horse. All right, that works pretty good. You don't have to go heavy with this. You just, just enough to blue it. Now I'm gonna go a little bit heavier here in the middle because it's missing some spots. I like consistent blue, not splotchy blue. In my opinion, I can see it a little bit better. And if you want to, guys, you can always just spray the whole sheet if you wanted to, but then you gotta make sure that it's in a clean, confined space and not gonna rust or anything because it will like stick to it really, really well, better than paint. So there we go. We're just gonna let that dry for about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll go ahead and put our template on there and start tracing it out with the scribe. All right guys, so it's been about 10 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and scribe our template in. Now I didn't mention this in the tools part. I recommend it, but you don't have to have it. That's one of the reasons why I didn't put it in there and that's some good magnets. But good magnets will go a long ways when it comes to helping you scribe and get this thing accurate. Now, these are magnets out of a motor, so they're really extra strong. And I gotta give props and a thank you to my friend Robert for these because these are the best magnets I've ever used. So we're gonna go ahead and split these off one by one if I can, they're really, really tough. And we're gonna make sure that everything is nice and flat. Ooh, you see that? You gotta be very careful with these. These things will pinch you really bad and it sucks, trust me. And what I'm doing to get these apart is I'm twisting them off and it's really tough. We try to spread the magnets out as evenly as possible with what we got. Now it's starting to get really tough. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and take our scribe. This is a carbide tip scribe that I got from Home Depot for those of you who might be interested. I believe it's made by Irwin. Then you're gonna just put some consistent pressure. Now you gotta be careful, this is magnetic. And you're just gonna push down with a good amount of pressure and just scribe. And I like to go twice over everything. Sometimes three times, depending on whether I think it needs it or not. The smaller stuff I usually go three or four times because I can't push as hard against the cardboard, otherwise it'll deform it.
All righty guys. So as you can see, we got everything nice and scribed out. Nice crisp lines. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but I try to focus it as best as possible. And now what we're gonna do is I'm going to take my electric shears since I have them available to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and shear all the way up across on both sides and then shear across the back and make it a smaller piece to work with. And then once we get to these intricate pieces in here, I'll go ahead and use the hand shears to shear the notches so that way it comes out nice and clean. Okay, so I know I said I was gonna cut it up the sides, but I decided to cut it across the top. The reason for that is I wanted extra sheet metal left over in bigger piece rather than a smaller piece. As you guys can see, I'm taking off the main bulk of the sheet metal with the shears. And I'm cutting really close to the line on here, but not exactly on it in some places. And don't worry if you guys don't get it perfect the first time. You can go back and make little adjustments in a little bit, as you'll see here in just a second. So I come in with the shears, handheld shears, and I go ahead and cut the notches out because it's the easiest way to do it rather than that, that big bulky machine. And not only that, I can get more accurate cuts. And I'm cutting out the squares in the corners, so when I bend it, it folds together nice and easy. And as you can see, I'm cutting the back of it with some hand shears because I didn't quite get it right on the line and I wasn't quite happy with it, so I decided to go back in and make it a little bit more accurate. Next up, I'm going to hammer the corners down. What that's going to do is make them flat again because with the hand shears, they tend to lift a little bit. I'm going to clamp it down to the table, and you're going to use a file or a rasp and file the edge nice and straight to a point where it's almost as straight as if you were to cut it on a stomp shear. And I'm going back in right now, as you can see, with some hand shears and cleaning it up a little bit more. And after the file, we're going to follow it up with the deburr knife, like I was talking about earlier, so that way it's not so sharp. We're just going to repeat the process over and over again all the way around. Going around the back side to make sure that uh, both sides are free of sharp edges. And then we're going to give it a good wipe down with some acetone to get rid of the dicum as best as possible before we sand all of it with the DA. Now it's very important guys that you do this process on everything. And the reason why I say that is so there's no rust or pits or anything like that. It looks much more professional at the end of the day, especially when you're going to be giving a product to someone. And we'll follow it up with some scotch Bright and put some line graining in it. And then wipe it down with some acetone again. Now I'm using a deburr wheel here. Um, not everybody has one of these available to them. They are quite expensive. It's about $70 just for that wheel right there that you see. Alrighty guys, unfortunately my uh, battery died while I was bending this. So can't undo that. But here it is. All complete. All nice and finished. I have decided I'm going to weld the corners on this since they line up pretty good. And it's going to add it for a little bit more extra stability um, when we uh, spot weld this inside the Coca-Cola machine. So with that guy, 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.